Narui Hospitals, promoted by the Sanko Foundation, is the brainchild of the founder chairman, Dr. G. V. Sampath. Belonging to Velo, the medical hub of India, Dr. Sampath's vision to create a medical destination for the people of Velo in particular and others from India at large and also overseas resulted in the establishment of a hospital here, a real crown jewel in the field of healthcare. Large numbers of people belonging to Velo and the surrounding districts have been known to travel to Chennai and Bengaluru, both nearly 200 kilometers away from Velo, seeking medical care due to the dearth of facilities and the hardships faced by the locals to access available services. As per the vision of the chairman, the best in healthcare, both in terms of medical and nursing professionals, as well as sophistication, were infused into the institution, making sure that patient affordability was addressed at all times. Less than a month after Naruvi Hospitals opened its doors to the public, the second wave of COVID loomed large as life. We took on the challenge and quickly rose to the occasion, catering to the local population and some from outstation as well, adding close to 40 critical care beds and over 200 ward beds to the COVID care pool. Much as it was hard for a one-month-old hospital to handle such large volumes of very sick patients, Naruvi Hospitals was able to contribute significantly in our country's efforts to save people from the disastrous end that COVID was driving people to. Naruvi Hospitals is positioned as a high-end tertiary care centre. Our focus on ethics, transparency, patient satisfaction and an academic outlook in everything we do ensures that doctors, nurses and others in the care team are performing at their conscientious best to not only treat patients' ailments but also to make them happy overall when they leave our hospital. We have tied up with the Henry Ford Health System, HFHS, based out of Michigan State in the United States of America. HFHS is one of the old and leading healthcare delivery systems in Midwestern America. The main aim of this tie-up is to have constant transfer of knowledge and to get access to the time-tested practices they have been following for decades, which ultimately translated to patient care. Naruvi Hospitals is a completely paperless and filmless hospital. The Naruvi philosophy of care is embodied by our motto, Fragrance of Care. The doctors in Naruvi are largely trained in the best of medical institutes in India and come with years of rich experience in their fields of expertise. With the philosophy and its pallbearers, the medical and nursing professionals, the high-end equipment and the building infrastructure complete the holistic picture a fragrance of care. The hospital is 475 bedded with a 25% critical care bed count. Naruvi Hospitals boasts of an over 5 lakh square foot building spanning 14 levels. The building is completely air conditioned, conforming to ASHRAE standards with zone specific air conditioning to reduce cross infection between different care areas. Our laundry is 100% barrier washed. We have a top-of-the-line sterilization department with machines with 95% water-saving machines, saving up to 300 liters of water every running hour. We have all the major medical and surgical specialties. There are 16 modular operation theaters with laminar airflow. All the equipment in the ICUs and OTs are pendant mount to avoid clutter on the floor. All the departments are equipped to the most modern standards with the best and latest equipment so as to be able to provide the best end-to-end -end treatment to our patients. State-of-the-art cardiac cath labs, the latest robotic hybrid OT, ECMO, interventional pulmonology, high-end orthopedics, general and bariatric surgery, epilepsy monitoring unit with robot-guided epilepsy surgery, neuromonitoring, navigation, the latest lithotripter, urology laser are just some of the arrows in our quiver. Our primary focus, though being the local Velo people and Indians at large, we are working towards attracting overseas patients as well. We have started an office in North Sudan in Khartoum. We are in the process of tying up with the garments of Oman and Seychelles as well. In all, Naruvi Hospitals is more than a hospital. It is an experience.
Hello and a warm welcome to everybody on this Sunday morning for another edition of our webinar under the Hindu Wellness Series. Today's webinar presented by Naruvi Hospitals is, as you all know, on slip disc and endoscopic surgery. Our spinal column is made of a series of bones known as the vertebrae that are stacked onto each other and cushioned by discs. These discs are like the shock absorbers for the body that safeguard the bones from the impact of our daily activities like walking, lifting, twisting, and much more. Slip discs are a common problem that mostly come with age. Doctors say that 80% of people above 50 years of age have slip disc, and 60% people suffer height loss because of slip disc. Only when people get back or, neck, uh, or their neck pain and go for MRI, they find changes. But then not every back pain is due to an injured disc. To explain it all, we have a panel of spine surgeons with us today who will explain what is slip disc, the most vulnerable age group, and how it can be a problem, its common causes, the red flag symptoms, treatment, preventions, and myths. Our panelists will first give their brief presentations on the topic and thereafter the audience is welcome to send in their questions once the chat box is open. So let me quickly introduce you to uh, today's speakers. Our first speaker is Dr. P. Sriharsha, a consultant spine surgeon at Narubi Hospitals in Velour. After completing his MBBS from PES Institution of Medical Sciences and Research in Chittur, Andhra Pradesh, he pursued D ortho course at NRI Medical College, Guntur, and a secondary DNB in orthopedic surgery in Gangaram Center and Hospital, Coimbatore. Dr. Sriharsha has worked in departments of general trauma, casualty, plastic and reconstructive surgery, hand surgery, spine, pediatric, orthopedics, arthroplasty, and arthroscopy. Working at Naruvi Vellore well since 2022, Dr. Sriharsha will speak on the causes and symptoms how low back pain and slip disc. Uh, I welcome you and it's over to you, Dr. Sriharsha. Thank you very much, Soma. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm going... Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Sriharsha from uh, Spine Surgery Department of Naruvi Hospitals. Today, I'm going to speak with you about uh, low back pain and uh, specifically lumbar disc disease. Every one of us know what is a low back ache, but to define it, it is the pain between the lower edge of the ribs and the buttocks in the back. Most of us must have experienced low back pain at least once in our lifetime, uh, but many less of us know that uh, it is a globally highest prevalent musculoskeletal condition causing a severe disability. And it is the leading cause of musculoskeletal disability around the world, according to WHO lists. This graph shows the increase in low back ache over the past 30 years. It also shows the trend between males and females where females are more affected than males. And this increasing trend estimates around 850, people, 850 million people affected by 2015. It is the most severe cause that can be decreased by just rehabilitation. It uh, highest prevalence occurs between 50 to 55 years of age. A non-specific low back pain uh, tends to be 90% of time the reason for the situation. The causes of low back pain. In children, low back pain is most often related to sports injuries, or heavy backpacks which they carry nowadays. In adults, usually it is because of repetitive motions, like uh, occupational workers, where they have to lift severe heavy loads or even moderate loads repeatedly for long periods of time. And uh, prolonged sitting, where uh, uh, desk jobs make uh, people sit for long periods of time in improper postures and uh, people uh, tend to have a work from home where they lie down on the bed and start working. And in elder, elderly, it is mainly due to facet arthropathy where uh, joints become uh, get arthritis because of old age and a decrease of uh, uh, spinal canal size causing compression on the spinal cord and sometimes on spinal nerves. A risk factors for uh, low back ache is primarily aging. 
aging as we think is not just a number but sometimes it happens even in much younger people because of obesity improper posture long term sitting smoking causing a dehydration of the disc uh, as you have spoken earlier a disc is a compressible elastic structure in between the spine spinal vertebrae and uh, this uh, tends to become harder and uh, inelastic and gets ruptured because of age women tend to have more back pain especially after menopause and obesity as uh, we all know uh, increases the amount of uh, strain on the back along with this uh, poor posture hunching and slouching while sitting uh, and repeated uh, lifting of weights will cause these problems uh, physical inactivity also has become a recently increasing cause of low back ache along with these uh, uh, psychological factors like anxiety is also a cause for low back ache so as we can see here these are the 33 bones of our spine and these 33 bones just stacked on each other are not direct contact with each other they have elastic soft discs placed in between them like this so here we see not just the discs but also the nerves that are coming out of the spinal cord so spinal cord which is uh, present inside this bone acts as a wire between the brain and our body muscles and these yellow colored nerves which we see here are the connections between our brain and our limbs when this intervertebral disc gets damaged the normal disc which has an annulus and a nucleus inside will start to expose it outside and pr cause pressure on the spinal nerves that are passing at the back of them here we can see this damaged disc where annulus got damaged through this the nucleus can either come out or even without coming out it can cause inflammatory reaction which will cause uh, pressure on the nerve and thus pain and sometimes uh, decreased function so the decreased function can either be uh, decreased muscle function or a decreased sensation in their legs like numbness or tingling so uh, here's a pictorial representation the disc which is coming out causing pressure on the nerve and this causes severe pain for the patient so how severe is it there is a grading for this disc prolapse so disc prolapse Uh, is not just prolapse it can be varying from degeneration till sequestration here we see all the four stages so the first one in this is degeneration degeneration is nothing but uh, uh, dehydration with age how a leaf gets dehydrated as it becomes old uh, the uh, disc in between our uh, bones also gets dehydrated with age and it becomes inelastic so when a old person bends too forward it tends to break and because of that it can start pushing outside second level is prolapse where slightly it is protruding outside and causing pressure on the nerve at the back the third level is extrusion where the nucleus pulposus material has pushed its way through the annulus come out and is causing inflammatory reaction and pressure on the nerves at the back the fourth one is sequestration in this it not only came out of its uh, normal area but it gets separated completely goes into the spinal canal it can shift either below or above its level and cause varieties of symptoms in these patients so what are the causes that causes lumbar disc disease most common one is age related wear and tear and second one is uh, injury to this disc part because of trauma or poor posture so this trauma can be either an acute trauma where he had a sudden accident or repeated trauma where the patient has been sitting in poor posture for very long or has been lifting a moderate amount of weights for too long and lifestyle choices like smoking smoking uh, as we know it decreases the size of the blood vessels in heart in the same way it also decreases size of blood vessels everywhere along with intervertebral discs where uh, the intervertebral discs start becoming dehydrated very early 
and lack of exercise a lack of exercise decreases amount of blood flow to the discs and it also causes dehydration obesity uh, as we know a um, lot of people tend to eat more and become obese nowadays and this whole body weight must be borne by the spine alone when the patient is either standing or sitting along with this uh, sedentary occupations or occupations where repeated trauma is very common uh, cause increased risk of backache what are the symptoms of this backache the first symptom very frequently heard from all the patients is pain so pain not just low backache so even though it is the most common one the pain can also occur in gluteal areas or back of thighs back of legs foot or sole uh, in some patients they can come up with pain starting in their knees or hips in the starting days and then slowly spreads on to the gluteal region and some people might not even experience low back pain uh, so this is all about lumbar disc uh, causing pain in case of cervical discs it can happen in upper limb like shoulder elbow and hand too in a low back ache uh, it, though it is the most common symptom uh, when the patient comes with uh, pain to the leg then it shows that uh, the patient has a pressure on one of these nerves uh, according to the patient symptoms we categorize the patient according to which uh, nerve is being affected along with this the patient can also come up with numbness and tingling of the legs numbness can have a different distribution according to the level affected in their spine now it can be in the thigh or it can be in the leg or in the foot or on the sole uh, in some cases this this is <coughs> also can cause a pins and needle to sensation in their legs next is a weakness a weakness is one of the most severe forms of symptoms in patients Uh, even though patients tend to uh, overlook weakness than pain weakness uh, uh, tends to be more severe if it is more severe what happens is it tends to become permanent and a patient will have severe disability in future so usually this weakness occurs in hip where patient won't be able to flex or extend or knee and most commonly ankle where the patient won't be able to lift the ankle when a patient comes into our patient department we usually examine him and uh, question him about uh, previous uh, uh, episodes of similar pain previous accidents his lifestyle the times when it occurs and uh, accordingly ask him to uh, undergo specific diagnostic tests x rays and mris um, and after uh, uh, getting results from this x rays and mri we comprehensively evaluate the patient totally and uh, uh, find out what is the reason for the patient's uh, pain so why mri as you can see here uh, many patients usually tend to ask uh, why not x ray is sufficient and why uh, people ask for mri very regularly we can see here uh, uh, why it is so uh, x ray shows only the bones usually bones if they are in position uh, x ray looks quite normal we can't find much abnormality you know rarely we might be able to find a calcified disc or decrease in disc space where disc is completely extruded uh, but uh, in a normal pa regular patients uh, we will be have to take an mri to find out uh, where the patient has a disc prolapse exactly so when not to worry Uh, if it is a sudden acutely occurring self limiting back ache without any leg pain thigh pain without any weakness then you need not uh, worry about it too much and usually it will be amenable to conservative management and uh, regular checkups uh, when to get it thoroughly evaluated and when you must worry is when the patient's age is much less like less than 80 years or more than 50 years when the patient has a fever with chills Uh, night pain uh, especially in the back uh, the patient starts waking up in the middle of the night and starts crying because of the pain uh, unable to even turn in his bed uh, or the patient has a history of cancer especially prostatic cancer lung cancer breast cancers 
uh, and any significant uh, major trauma in recent past, like a fall from height or an accident in a, uh, while driving. Uh, the patient has a progressive motor weakness. The patient has a weakness in his leg or thigh and it is increasing with time. Then, yes, it has to be thoroughly evaluated. There is a loss of sensation. Uh, either it can be in the foot, leg or rarely in the uh, sitting area of the buttocks. That's called as a saddle area. Uh, along with this, uh, if the patient has a uh, disturbance in his urination and uh, bubbles, then it is very important to get uh, immediately evaluated and intervention intervened. Um, some patients will have inflammatory back pain where the patient starts having pain in the middle of the night or early in the morning. When he wakes up in the morning, he starts having stiffness. But once he starts walking around, it improves. Then it has to be evaluated thoroughly to find out what kind of spondyloarthropathy he might be having. Uh, rarely in some patients, they might have an abdominal mass, which is uh, pulsatile, along with uh, tenderness, uh, which tends to be of any other vascular cause rather than uh, spinal cause. So prevention and lifestyle tips will be dealt by Dr. Vijay Raghavan, sir. Uh, but I will be telling something about common misconceptions where pe people tend to think uh, bed rest is the best cure. Uh, no, it is not because the spine is made to walk around and once they are walking around, the spinal muscles tend to relax. Uh, and many people think that if they come to a hospital, they will be operated upon. Uh, so surgery is not the only option. Uh, usually 95% of the patients get better with just uh, conservative management of uh, medications, proper physiotherapy and uh, rehabilitation. And some patients tend to think uh, pain is normal with aging. No, pain is not normal with aging. Okay. Uh, patients uh, think that uh, unable to walk, uh, difficulty in walking is also because of aging. Uh, they have to understand that it is not normal. So thank you very much for this opportunity given by Hindu newspaper. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sriharsha for that very ex uh, exhaustive presentation covering so many points. I would like to now invite our next speaker, Dr. Vijay Raghavan Ji, who is working as Senior Consultant Spine Surgeon at MGM Healthcare Chennai. A graduate of Madras Medical College, Dr. Vijay Raghavan did his MS in Orthopedics at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi, followed by a DNB in Orthopedics. Recipient of multiple fellowships in India and abroad, Dr. Vijay Raghavan's expertise is in pediatric and adult spine deformity correction surgeries, and minimally invasive spine, spine surgeries. He has published numerous articles in medical journals of repute and worked in Primus Super Speciality Hospital in Delhi and Fortis Malar Hospital in Chennai before joining MGM Healthcare in 2019. He will speak on prevention and treatment options available for slip disc. Uh, welcome, Dr. Vijay Raghavan. Hello, hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'll be talking about uh, the prevention part of uh, slip disc. So, uh, the previous speaker has elaborated about uh, what actually happens when the disc slips. So I'll just give it in a one slide as a short note. So when the disc prolapses, so it's like a foam coming out of a torn pillow. So this, the fragment which has come out will compress the nerve and the nerve gets swollen up. So the entire problem is because uh, there is a congestion in the opening. There is a small opening in the spine through which the spine nerves exit. So there is a congestion in the opening, one because of the disc fragment and uh, second because of the a lot of fluid there compressing the nerve and third because of the swelling up nerves. So this will cause back pain and radiating leg pain. The treatment part, uh, the good news is majority of the slip disc problem can be treated without surgery. So that is what uh, every patient wants. So whenever we advise surgery for any uh, any patient for any problem, any spine related problem, the universally the first question they ask is like, is there any alternative? Should I undergo spine surgery? Uh, but for other things, 
the option of uh, conservative may be less but for slip disc the majority of them do with well with conservative measures so when i say conservative measures it means physiotherapy so there are two parts in physiotherapy the first part is like to get the patient out of that acute pain episode so initial few weeks and the second part the long run we teach them exercises to strengthen the lower back muscles or the neck muscles so that the pain relief is maintained throughout and they don't get these kind of symptoms again so to avoid recurrence and of course uh, we give some basic uh, medications to relax the muscles painkillers and to calm down the nerves so these are the two parts of the uh, conservative thing so ultimately uh, the nature heals so the body will heal the inflammatory fluid over period of few weeks so the patient has to wait uh, so what we practically see is like uh, whatever treatment modality we do so the there, sh- there will be some sort of pain for the initial 2 3 weeks so the patient tend to uh, change the treatment protocol shift from doctors or more physiotherapists involved so the key word is wait so if you wait patiently and undergo the conservative measures gradually the symptoms will subside within few weeks so when it comes to physiotherapy uh, so there are a lot of uh, machines like ift ultrasonics and diathermy all these things will uh, in commonly they generate some heat waves which will relax the muscles and uh, that will increase the circulation in that area so that will help to heal the inflammation there and then uh, that will also stimulate the muscles and relax the muscles that is the principle of all these th- all these various uh, modalities physiotherapists offer for this acute uh, back pain and neck pain and uh, it will they have to take these uh, physiotherapy modalities for few days and uh, if the pain is very severe in fact we have some portable machines that can be uh, like home visits are also possible with uh, these uh, physiotherapy the patient need not have to go to the physiotherapy center every time uh, the ultrasonic machine other things are portable and uh, as mentioned by the previous speaker a strict bed rest is not required so in our language we say it's activities as tolerated so whatever activities possible with a slip disc problem they can carry on with that so bed rest is definitely not required of course little bit of restrictions of movements will be there which physiotherapist will guide them and all these uh, physiotherapy modalities will be uh, will be under a guidance of a spine specialist the spine specialist and the physiotherapist both will coordinate and set a protocol for each and every patient depending upon the symptomatology another modality which we commonly use is traction where we put some weight and try to pull that affected part mostly it works better with the uh, for the cervical discs so what happens here is when you put traction the opening where actually the congestion is there uh, it it widens so this will al- allow the nerves to breathe and the uh, reparative process becomes easy so these are the various physiotherapy modalities and the third thing is braces uh, neck collars and lumbar belt so uh, for acute episodes when the patient is having severe pain of course these things are like a support system they don't directly address the pathology but it will just help the uh, it will do it will do the jo- job of the muscles so the muscles can get relaxed when the patient is using these kind of braces but for regular use so we s- normally see patients who have a slip disc problem they tend to it becomes a habit they they regularly start using these lumbar belt and uh, collars for long run which is actually not uh, good for them so because the principle the idea is to strengthen their muscles so the second part of the physiotherapy we have to strengthen the muscles if the if they regularly start wearing these braces the brace will do the job of a muscle so the muscle will gradually undergo wasting and become weak so the nature given uh, braces are our muscles so we need to strengthen the natural braces that is our muscles that is the principal aim so i just wanted to stress this uh, this point uh, through this slide and then once the patient comes out of that acute episode the uh, physiotherapist Uh, will teach some basic stretching exercises to stretch those muscles and then gradually tone up the muscles so that these exercises help uh, to avoid recurrence of slip disc problem for uh, slip disc in the lower back region uh, mostly the extensor muscles are focused so these exercises can be done even by a normal person you don't have to get a slip disc to start doing all these exercises these are some basic exercises which will generally keep your muscles strong similarly uh, for the neck pain and the disc in the neck region we uh, teach neck isometric exercises again these exercises can be done by anybody uh, even if you don't have a disc these things can help to uh, keep your muscles toned up the second step so for 
if suppose uh, physiotherapy doesn't help the patient is still having pain in spite of physiotherapy or uh, if the pain is so severe that they are not able to actively participate in physiotherapy then the second option we give is spinal injections so the injection is given uh, close to that opening where the congestion is there so this injection will go and relieve uh, the edema that fluid which is uh, irritating the nerve so these this injection can give instant pain relief for most of the patients but still we don't offer this injection as the first step the first step is always uh, natural healing with physiotherapy and other supportive measures this is given as a second step uh, in western countries uh, the pain threshold is very low so there we can see like patients within few days of uh, slip disc onset they don't wait for the natural healing process they get uh, the steroid this epidural shots within few days or few weeks but here we offer is at step 2 but uh, the problem we face practically practically is uh, what we give in this injection is a mixture of steroid and local anesthesia to give pain relief but uh, generally among public there is a fear when we when they hear the word steroid so general thought is like steroid is not good for health but it's actually not entirely true so this the steroid that we give through this injection is just 1 cc of steroid which will go and relieve the edema but if you take steroids for other reasons like for immunity related issues we are taking oral steroids or iv steroids for a long run then those steroids enter your blood circulation and they are going to stay in your blood circulation for a long time in that cases in even in that cases very few patients may have some side effects but the steroids what the orthopedicians give in shoulder in joints and the spine is uh, just one cc of steroid in the local area which washed away on the which gets washed away on the same day so it hardly has any side effects because of that myth most of the patients even if they have severe pain they tend to avoid these kind of injections which is actually not required it's a simple day care procedures which can give very good pain relief for slip disc problem <laughs> and uh, surgery as i said earlier it's the last resort when all these things measures fail when the patient is not improving physiotherapy and uh, even the injections are not giving enough pain uh, relief then the surgery is uh, offered mostly after approximately uh, 12 weeks of uh, no improvement on conservative care so the idea is to go and remove the abnormal disc fragment which has come out and uh, relieve the nerve so this can be done by open method or by uh, minimally invasive keyhole uh, surgeries are also available which our next speaker will uh, talk about so so through the previous slides i've been telling that uh, conservative measures works well and patients uh, need to wait for few weeks but the only condition where you don't have to you should not wait where surgery becomes the first option which is very rare um, which was which was also mentioned by the previous speaker like if you have weakness of your legs and foot if there is any uh, numbness or sensory loss around your genital areas if there is any disturbance of your bladder and bowel control then surgery becomes the first so so patients with slip disc should be aware of this thing but this is very rare and uh, regarding surgery uh, again the next speaker will elaborate on that but generally it's not a major surgery it's a minor surgery most of the time uh, patients are mobilized within the same day or the next day after the surgery and they can return back to their work within few days after surgery and uh, coming to the second part of my lecture the prevention so in medicine we always say like prevention is better than cure and this uh, statement holds good for a slip disc problem and other generally mechanical uh, low back low back pain uh, back ache problems uh, the previous speaker mentioned about uh, the various risk factors so the risk factors can be cat categorized into two like there are factors which are not under our control we cannot modify those things like age or the sex or the the gender issue so the genetic tendency of uh, getting a slip disc or a weak muscles those are not in our hands but there are some factors which are modifiable like the obesity factor weight reduction can definitely help and again physical activity avoiding sedentary lifestyle and maintaining good postures so what we actually do in the treatment of slip disc so when a patient comes to us with a slip disc we give uh, conservative care to get rid of the pain and then the uh, last step is to strengthen the muscles so ideally you can actually reverse the scenario if you maintain good posture stick to ergonomics have a healthy lifestyle and keep your muscles strong then obviously the amount of uh, load which is going to your disc is going to be less and definitely you will have healthy discs and bones so the idea is to reverse the scenario so i'll give start off with an example for example in the neck uh, we have muscles especially a big large trapezius muscle which is in the back of the neck and uh, the goal of this muscle is to hold the neck 
in neutral position that centered between your two shoulders and uh, most of the people are in sitting job and uh, we tend to have a forward stooping posture like without our knowledge so for uh, for example if you hold an object in your hand your forearm is not going to ache but if you try to hold an object in the tip of your finger then your forearm will start aching after some time right so similarly if you keep your neck in neutral position then the amount of work done by the muscle in the back of the neck is less so it doesn't have to strain a lot to hold your neck on the in the neutral position but but every 15 degrees you move then this muscle has to do some extra work to hold the neck in the neutral position for example like 15 degrees some 27 pounds extra force is required then again for 30 45 degrees this keeps increasing so for few weeks few months even if you maintain this forward stooping abnormal posture you will not experience any pain the muscles will try to compensate and work in that abnormal position but after some time some micro tears happen then gradually the muscle will go into fatigue and the muscles will start weakening so when the when the muscle starts uh, when the muscles are weak then naturally so like one if suppose one person is not working then somebody has to do the work so the the must the workload gets transferred to the bones and joints they have to do more work so that's when the wear and tear becomes more that's what we call it as spondylosis so again uh, some part of the extra work is given to the disc so you we all know now like disc is not supposed to bear weight this the job of the disc is to it's just a shock absorber but when the muscles are not working when the bones are worn out then uh, extra load is given to the disc and that's when slip disc occurs so the every all these things are actually preventable if you follow a healthy lifestyle so the spine is not actually straight when you see from the side it has some specific curvatures so this curvatures are maintained by the muscles so the muscles if they act in an equilibrium this these curvatures will be maintained if the muscles are not if one group of muscles are not working then this equilibrium is lost then the spine curvatures are compromised if the spine curvatures are compromised then the weight distribution becomes uneven so that's when all these disc related problems happen like if you have multiple ropes in the ship no to hold the beam erect if suppose you cut one set of ropes the beam will collapse similarly so you need to have good strong muscles acting in equilibrium in a normal weight bearing axis to have healthy discs so you can get lot of these kind of pictures like good and bad sitting postures from google but probably now i think you can understand a little better in the first picture you can see uh, the spine curvatures are maintained so the person is sitting erect the head is in neutral position and uh, the back is in contact with the back of the chair so the lordosis is maintained whereas in the second picture you can see the entire spine is c shaped the neck is in non, not in neutral position so this, this will put the muscles into strain and the disc into strain for few days of course like immediately when the patient stands the spine curvatures are flexible it will go back to its normal curvature but consistently when the patient sits like this for a long time for few months or few weeks then 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 the compromise occurs so stick to good postures so how to stick to good postures so we need to follow the ergonomics so ergonomics is like uh, you have to adjust your work atmosphere according to your convenience you should not uh, compensate your body postures accordingly like tamil uh, சொல்லுவாங்களே அப்ப காலுக்கு ஏத்த மாதிரி செருப்பு போடணும் அந்த மாதிரி சோ யூ சுட் நாட் அட்ஜஸ்ட் யுவர் செல்ஃப் ஆர் அக்கார்டிங் டு ஒர்க் பிளேஸ் சோ த ஹைட் வித் பேக் ரெஸ்ட் and uh, the seat everything should be adjustable we have ergonomic chairs but if you have a normal chair with all these adjustable things you can you, and if you know the principles of ergonomics you can you don't have to buy an ergonomic chair so some small few tips so ideally your the height from distance from the knee to the floor this height should be equal to the uh, seat to the ground so this will avoid unnecessary flexing of the hips and knees like this so you should maintain this and secondly the thigh should be parallel to the ground so this will again avoid unnecessary flexing of the hip and knees and putting stress on the back and the back should be in completely in contact with the back of the seat so in the second picture you can see a little bit of gap here a lot of gap here so this will again is against the normal weight bearing axis so unnecessary pressure on the tailbone and the discs will cause back pain and lifting weight so lifting weight as such will not is not a like a direct contribution for slip disc but if a patient is having uh, like like a previous speaker mentioned like consistent small uh, abnormal pressure on the discs like 
if the patient is having weak muscle not following good postures and the discs are at risk at one point of time when they lift weight in an abnormal way the tear occurs so in the first picture you can see that the patient is lifting weight the, the, the person is lifting weight without uh, bending the hip and knees the entire load is on the spine in the second picture this is the right way you should use your spine hip and knee bend down and then lift weight this this will distribute the weight between the spine hip and knee so that can avoid any uh, back related issues again turning with the weight so your entire the spine hip and knee should turn in one go in the second picture the hip and knee are facing forward and the patient is twisting the spine the people the, uh, the person is twisting the spine this again will cause uh, stress on the disc if the disc is already weak if the patient is already having a very weak muscles the entire load will go to the disc and he may have a uh, slip disc problem and then getting up from bed so this is not for patients everybody so we tend to get up from bed directly from supine position like this so ideally you should take turns flex your hip and knees break give a few seconds break and then put weight on your wrist and try to elevate your shoulders when the shoulders move up your legs should go down so this will again distribute the weight when you get up directly the entire load is on the spine these small things will help on long run and people who are on desk job uh try to like the first sentence of the laptop should be at eye level if you try to maintain this simple tip unnecessary stooping forward will be avoided so neck strain can be avoided and then plan your work surface so plan your work surface with, with we call it as a law of semicircle so the first semicircle should have the things which we you commonly use then the second semicircle should have things which we occasionally use and the last one should have the things which we you rarely use maybe your cell phones probably so this will avoid sudden movements and if you plan your work surface this particularly people who are around 8 to 10 hours of desk job if you plan your work surface like this that will help you a lot and then take frequent breaks so whenever i say this uh, like uh, the, the immediate response is see i have a 8 to 10 hour of job so i cannot afford to take break every half an hour or one hour so when we say break it doesn't mean you have to take a break for 5 to 10 minutes every one hour go to a separate room and do stretches no just get up from your sitting position stand for 10 to 15 seconds that itself will give a break to the lower back muscles and neck muscles so this small uh, effort from uh, people who are on this job like half an hour 40 minutes just get up from your bed uh, from your chair and again sit after 10 seconds that will make a big difference and when you do that when you just uh, when you're standing for a few seconds do some stretches i'll share this ppt with you people i can probably you can paste these pictures near the uh, desktop and most of these pictures are self explanatory this will stretch all the muscles around your neck and back uh, to keep them active so these kind of stretches can be done at your workplace and uh, one particular exercise which i want to stress i'm not going to explain all those exercises uh, those pictures will uh, give the information directly so this one is for the neck so try to clasp your uh, fingers and keep it behind the head and try to push the fingers uh, backwards so this will increase the muscle of the, the strength of the muscle in the back of the neck so that will help to maintain the neck in neutral position so this can be done by everybody who are on this job regularly early morning if you start doing these exercises and start your day i think your uh, most of your mechanical neck pain can be taken care of so so the uh, summary is like yes for slip disc problem surgery is not the only solution majority of them get better with exercises if not injections very few patients will require surgery which is also a minor day care procedure and lifestyle modification is the key try to avoid uh, risk factors like obesity keep yourself acting active and maintain your normal spine curvatures respect those curvatures and stick to ergonomics so if you uh, stick to good postures that will keep your muscles strong if your muscles are strong then automatically your disc and bone will be strong and frequent stretches and breaks for people who are on desk job and all these things together can definitely prevent uh, majority of the mechanical back pain and very few cases of slip disc thank you thank you dr vijay raghavan for explaining things so beautifully i was getting conscious of my posture sitting now and our final speaker of the webinar is dr bagya raj d senior consultant spine surgeon with naruvi hospitals in velour He did his MBBS from Kilpop Medical College and MS in Ortho from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi. 
He has done multiple spine surgery courses and received fellowships before joining Chennai Medical College Hospital and Research Center in Trichy. Later, he moved to Dhanalakshmi Srinivasan Medical College in Perambalur and Apollo KH Hospital, Velour, before joining Naruvi in 2020. Author of several published papers and a guest lecturer for continuing medical education programs, Dr. Bhagyaraj will shed light on the advanced and less invasive endoscopic disc surgery for slip disc. Welcome, Dr. Bhagyaraj. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the introduction. I'll go to the topic directly. So Dr. Vijay Raghavan and uh, Dr. Sears have explained about the, this prolapse and its common presentation and how to prevent. I'm going to stick on to the endoscopic specific topic that is endoscopic disc surgery. So, as we has been explained already, the disc is supposed to be inside the bone. It has come out and impinging the nerves. That with all the conservative treatment of modalities, if it is not decreasing or if there is severe symptom which requires surgery, we need to remove the disc and free the nerves. So there are multiple methods. One is open surgery. It is a traditional one. We expose from behind and we remove the offending disc, which is causing the compression. Next one is with some surgical microscope. With this, we had adequate illumination and magnification. So we can see the structures very clearly and we can operate. But uh, disadvantage with this is you need some space for the light to enter and we need some space for the instruments to enter. That disadvantage is cleared by the endoscopic disc surgery. The viewers can relate this endoscopic to well-known laparoscopic surgery. In laparoscope, we introduce the camera into the abdomen and see the structures and remove the abnormal structures. The same way in endoscopic disc surgery, we introduce the camera from the back into the disc or close to the disc and remove the abnormal disc which is causing the pain. So the main difference is in open and microscopic surgery, to reach the abnormal thing, we are damaging a lot of normal structures. That is bone, muscle dissection, soft tissue dissection, and bone dissection. In endoscopy, only thing we are damaging is the skin incision that is less than one, one centimeter compared to other. And all other structures are dilated. And we reach the disc directly and remove the disc. For this, we use a natural foramen, which is present, natural hole, which is present in our bone. So through this, we reach the disc. Okay. It is planned preoperatively with the MRI images, how much distance, which disc to target, which area to target. We try to replicate the same thing during surgery using the intraoperative X-ray machine with the, it is called as FIAM. So we, we introduce it exactly at what disc level we need to operate, then we remove the offending disc. It's a short video of uh, endoscopic disc surgery. This is the disc. We reach directly the disc. This is our uh, neural structures. There are some hard analysis, hard covering of the disc. Usually we'll remove the hard covering with special instruments. Once if you remove the hard coverings, we'll get a fluffy cotton-like material that is a disc which is causing the symptoms. Once you move, if you remove the cotton-like uh, uh, disc which is compressing the nerve, the leg pain will be completely relieved the next day. It will be very small peanut size, but like a stone in our shoes, it will be troubling the patient. If you remove the stone, you will be comfortable like, like that. You remove the disc, they will be comfortable next day. So the incision will be less than one centimeter incision. So this is the pre-op image. 
and after surgery we'll remove the disc which is causing compression again you can see the disc bulge in this level it is not causing any symptoms as jira 1 and 3 years have said all the disc need doesn't require surgery so this is another patient with pain in the neck and going to his upper limb previously traditionally what they will do is they will do expose from front of neck and they will remove the disc completely and they will keep a artificial spacer and fuse this level this is the standard surgery performed but nowadays we can pass the endoscope from behind we can remove the disc with minimal tissue damage with we can preserve your normal disc instead of putting something artificial so what are the advantage advantage the incision is very less in open surgery compared to open surgery and microscopic surgery it is less than 1 cm more than the incision main thing is how much the normal tissue you are damaging to reach the abnormal structures as a surgeon we try to preserve all the normal structures and remove the abnormal structures but in spine surgery to reach the abnormal structures we are the till now uh, before the endoscopy we don't have the technology to reach it to be without uh, damaging the normal structures now we have a technology to reach it without uh, damaging normal structures okay so this is the example of uh, left side is your 6 months post op mri right side is open surgery the left side you cannot find whether you operated from which side the right side or left side in this you can see this is the scar tissue you can see the muscles are not attached to the bone normally it should get attached to the bone here it is not attached so as vijayaragavan said there is a imbalance between the muscle tissue so it, the patient may develop chronic back pain because of the imbalance of the muscles so next thing is the hospital stay the can, patient can admitted in the morning get operated in the early morning and get, they can go home in the night they need not stay in the hospital and third one is patient can go to join work early within one to two weeks in open surgery it will take three to six weeks and the second thing i want to reiterate is any spine surgery we advise every patient will ask sir, sir whether i whether can whether i can walk because everyone is afraid that new now injury can happen they can be completely bedridden after the surgery there are few technology which is available in narvi and which is recent for the past 20 years spin surgery has become very safe because of these technology the endoscopy and microscopy it gives magnification and proper illumination of the structure so the it gives very clear visualization of structures which we are operating it minimizes the chances for accidental nerve injury second dose intraoperative neuromonitoring everyone knows how pulse oximeter helped during the covid time so without pulse oximeter probably most of us would have lost sleep in the night whenever we have doubt we'll put pulse oximeter and see okay everything is fine sleep so the same way we have neuromonitoring during surgery whenever we have doubt we can see whether the nerves are functioning well so this is boon to any all spine surgeons especially when you are doing uh, major surgeries like deformities another i don't another newer thing is intraoperative spine navigation so this helps to place implant screws in a ideal position we can see the trajectory and position of the screw before inserting it so if there is some correction needed before inserting we can correct the trajectory so these three things made the spine surgery safe In concluding the endoscopic surgery is the least invasive option available for disc surgery at present it causes less collateral damage to the normal muscle ligaments and bone and it, because of that it gives early recovery the newer technologies available for spine surgery made the spine surgery safe so just because of the afraid of, of spine surgery you need not uh, wait nowadays the spine surgery has become safe if you have a severe problem you just get treated in a proper place thank you
Thank you, uh, doctors, for those presentation and Dr. Bhagyaraj for that very concise uh, slide presentation. I think with your presentations, we are almost nearing closing time, so I'll quickly start taking the questions. But before that, since we ended with the endoscopic surgery, I just wanted to ask you, uh, one is, of course, this comparison you gave conventional versus the endoscopic surgery, but yes. is endoscopic surgery, which is a modern uh, form of treatment, is it easily accessible, available to everybody? or we find it only in limited centers and how much does it cost for a patient? At present, it's available only in limited centers in Tamil Nadu. The cost only is Tamil not... Nadu? Or what about India? India India also. Every state will have three or four surgeons only doing this. Um, the cost is relatively uh, same, five, around 5% difference in lumbar spin. In cervical spin, actually 25 to 30% lesser than open surgery for the neck. The low back, it will be around 1 lakh to 1, 1 lakh 25,000. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Sriharsha, quickly, like, you know, you were talking about uh, the causes and symptoms. So back pains are obviously very common and we often tend to dismiss it as, uh, as you also said, like it's a, uh, maybe it was a bad posture while we slept the previous night or a sitting posture during the day. So when somebody gets a back pain, how does one determine that if it is a really a serious matter for which I need to seek medical attention? Or, you know, I myself self-medicate and think, okay, I'll take three days bed rest and hopefully things will be over, but actually they may not end up like that. So how does that, you know, that fine line, how do we differentiate? You can uh, think about uh, three points here. The first one is... Uh... If the back pain is that severe that you are not able to bend forward and touch your toes or touch your knees, then yeah, you have to get to a doctor. The second thing, if the pain is radiating to one side, <coughs> one leg you are having pain or one uh, the hand you are having severe pain, uh, not just in the back or the neck, but uh, limb pain is there, then yes, you have to go to the doctor. Third one, when you have weakness in your uh, limbs, uh, you are not able to lift your ankle or uh, you're not able to sense your toe, you feel too much of numbness, then you have to go to a doctor. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, you can wait for a while uh, if, because uh, having a low back ache just because of improper posture or uh, lifting some uh, heavy weight is quite common. Uh, you can wait for 24 to 48 hours, uh, give it some rest and walk it off. Uh, walking off is the best thing. Uh, you can't uh, expect it to come down with bed rest. Rather have a walk, it will come down. Right. Dr. Vijay Raghavan, uh, like you also mentioned that surgery, though of course the new modern surgery, uh, the intervention doesn't look so risky or uh, painful, but you also said that surgery is not really required. It can also be avoided and it can. So does it mean that medication can also be the only option? And what about, you know, people also go for alternative uh, medication? Uh, they, they, they will go for Ayurveda or herbal oil, massaging and things like that. So could you just throw a little light on that? So particularly for slip disc issue. One second. Yeah, for the slip disc issue, as I told, uh, all this swelling, which is the congestion that is happening in the opening will gradually come down. For example, if we hit our elbow somewhere, we're getting a swelling in your elbow or a knee, you don't like treat it like gradually one or two, three days, it will go. The nature will heal. So similarly, the fluid and edema, which is compressing the nerve will gradually come down within few weeks till then you need just need supportive treatment, either in the medication and physiotherapy. So, and when to do surgery that we have already explained. So, so patient has to wait. So for few weeks, the more, the other alternative modalities, everything will address symptomatic supportive treatment only so the modality they choose by the end of fourth or sixth week the patient think that is what helped them and similarly like uh, fourth or sixth week the doctor they meet, met the doctor they met they think that they are the best doctors they heal the problem actually it's the nature which has healed it takes few weeks at least six weeks will be needed for the slip disc to completely cure so that is the motto. The magic word is wait. You just have to wait. And when not to wait, we already stressed it out. Like if you have a weakness or uh, severe pain and other things not responding, then of course you need to move to step two or step three. Okay. Uh, uh, Kandaswami Ramana. But as long as it is Sorry. just pain responding to physical patient wait. 
Pardon? Mm-hmm. No, I was just reading out a question from 76 okay. years old Kandaswami Ramanathan. It's a long question. He says that he's having frequent low back pain managing with anti-inflammatory drugs on SOS basis. His MRI reveals L5-S1, which is diffuse annular disc bulge with bilateral arthrosis and facetal osteophytes with ligamentum hypertrophy indenting the Okay, okay. 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 So I have have read both these. I have read the MRI report. Yeah. Tell him whether the surgery can give him permanent relief. So, see, he is 76 year old. So, Mm -hmm. doctor, as Dr. Shiyasha mentioned, after 60s, it's mostly because of wear and tear of the joints and weak muscles and facet uh, arthropathy. So, in in the report, you can see there is no nerve root compression, no nerve root or cord compression. So probably we need to see the patient, examine the patient clinically and give a permanent solution. But whatever information available, I think is mainly due to the wear and tear of his joints that is causing the back pain. And uh, he he should get better with good exercises uh, regimen for him. I don't think surgery is required. Of course, we need to see him personally. Right. Suresh Kumar is asking that <clears throat> what is the next option if pain is not relieved? after surgery for slip disc with compression? So we need to evaluate your voice. There is an Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, now it's okay. It uh. was- so we need to evaluate why the patient is still having pain after spine surgery, after the uh, decompression surgery. Probably the adjacent levels might have had a uh, disc or probably the disc must have recurred or other things. So if the patient, so for that first step is evaluate. And when you find a reason, most of the time uh, with... Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, could you please take it forward? Yeah, so we need to first evaluate why uh, the patient is having pain. And then uh, most probably with injections, most of these uh, minimal residual pains settle down. I think if you're, if you're not able to hear, I think Bakiraj can explain till I sort it out. Yeah, in between there was some yeah. problem. Yeah, Dr. Bakiraj, yeah, if you could just take it on from there. Like no, also, the... Yeah, also because somebody is asking that whether, you have of course mentioned it also, whether after a slip disc surgery, you can get back to normal routine life and what is the chance of a relapse? No, according to surgery. literature, relapse that is uh, again developing the disc collapse at the same level is around 4 to 6% chance. But uh, if you proper pro, if you maintain proper uh, post-op protocol and proper exercises, strengthen the muscles, the chance for recurrence is very less. What's the second part now? Uh, second part was like uh, whether you can get back to normal life. Normal. Yes, no. After this surgery, usually after three to four months, they can do whatever they were doing previously. This just they need to maintain the proper post-op protocol, as Vijayaravan in his lecture saying, the lifestyle modification, bending with knees and hip flexed, and sitting in a proper portion. Otherwise, they can do all activities. They can involve in the sports also. Okay. MJ is asking, what is the self-healing mechanism we have in disc sequestration? Do they get ge- regenerated with time? Who would like to answer that? Disc gene, once it has come out, it will never go back in. Okay, it's once it degenerates while like graying up hair. Once it becomes white, it never becomes black again. But the disc, whatever has come out, Will shrink over time. That's why Vijayra once said you wait, always wait for six to eight weeks. It will shrink with our body mechanism as some anti inflammatory thing that will settle. Mm-hmm. Once it heals, the pain will decrease. Right. Uh, Dr. Sriyasha, maybe you again will have to reiterate once more that back pain is back pain. And if somebody is in severe pain, how does he recognize that it's a simple? muscle pull or it is a slip disc pain so a simple muscle pull 
will have a severe pain when the patient is trying to rotate himself or twist his uh, uh, waist from one side to other side. Uh, if you are uh, planting your legs uh, feet uh, firm on the ground and you are trying to twist your trunk uh, to one side, you will start having pain in case if it is a muscle pull. But uh, when it is a, a disc pain, the patient won't have uh, so much pain when he is trying to turn to sides, but he will have severe pain when he starts uh, uh, to sit down or squat, uh, like sitting in an Indian laboratory. Uh, that posture, squatting posture will cause pain. Usually in uh, Indians, uh, we tend to sit cross-legged on the floor. So the patient won't be able to assume this posture if he is having an acute slipper disc. And in case of uh, muscle pull, there will be usual history of uh, the previous day or uh, five to six hours back, the patient must have jumped from a height, lifted a weight suddenly, or uh, had a trivial tra injury while traveling in a bike, or his bike must be falling, he lifted it. Uh, some history will be there. Uh, and in case of a uh, slipper disc, usually there will be a previous history of a similar uh, injury, uh, similar episodes in the past. Mm -hmm. So how can a people, a people prevent back pain from worsening, uh, Dr. Bhagyaraj? And what activities or habits are likely to exacerbate? So when they have acute pain, that is uh, within initial two, three weeks, they should avoid bending forward and lifting weights and sitting on the floor. And any activity which requires flexion of bending forward of spine, that initially for two to three weeks when they have acute pain, they should avoid. They can use uh, walking from the first day, walking is allowed. Initial, that's what you should, I usually advise. For initial two to three weeks when there is pain, they can walk as much as possible. Every day, 45 minutes to one hour, brisk walking. Once the pain settles, then our duty is to strengthen the muscles to prevent further repeated episodes of back pain. For that, you need to strengthen the muscles. That, as uh, Ajay said, physiotherapist has a specific set of exercises for back muscles that we need to follow. Uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, could you please provide some tips or uh, the prescriptions for women? As you mentioned, that they often get back pain after menopause. So we have a query from a uh, Okay. Yeah. See, after menopause, the hormonal support is gone. So, so the back pain is quite common. The more importantly, uh, so we call it as osteoporosis, weakening of bones. So that is completely a different topic. So the problem with osteoporosis, it's asymptomatic. So it's a silent disease. Most of the patients, even if they have very weak bones, uh, they will not experience any pain. So postmenopausal, uh, it is better to get a uh, test to identify whether the patient is having osteoporosis or not. It's called DEXA scan. It's a simple non-invasive x-ray like uh, thing, which will give you a scoring. So it will uh, exactly tell you like what amount of weakness is there. So depending on that, uh, the doctor will prescribe you calcium, vitamin D, and there are also some drugs which can actively, uh, you know, form bones like bisphosphonates. So postmenopausal women, uh, better to get a DEXA scan, diagnose osteoporosis and treat it before it causes symptoms because uh, osteoporosis is a silent disease. Patient will not have any problem because of weakening of bones. Only if they fall down and get fractured, the patient will be symptomatic. So DEXA scan is a solution and depending upon the score, there are multiple drugs available to strengthen the bones. And as I think you already mentioned that uh, in one of the slides that uh, does it come to adolescence easily or there are some adolescence days? mostly I think Shriya Shamaj mostly uh, related to sports injuries doesn't come to adolescence so easily mostly some significant trauma will be there so purely posture related posture will not cause uh, a disc problem for a, a adolescent group. Right. So we'll just wrap up with one final question on what the myths about back pain, you know, like people may tend to panic when they get back pain. But as you also all of you had mentioned that in the back room discussions that all back pains are not due to slip disc. So what are those common myths? Maybe all of you could give your inputs and we could wind up. Yeah. So, so yes, uh, as you said, all back pain is not due to slip disc. Uh, we call it as mechanical back pain. So 80 to 90 percent of the back pain is due to bad postures. So, so when to uh, when it is significant, we already had a discussion. Dr. Shiyasha elaborated it. 
so the the myth which i want to say uh, not a myth actually so i would like to stress like whenever you have a back pain and if you feel it is significant better to get a specialist opinion and proceed because we nowadays see a lot of patients uh, get they get uh, x rays and mri done without any prescriptions so when you see an mri most of the patients in 30s and 40s will have some changes in the disc that will unnecessarily uh, lead to panic so we call it as mri disease the patient will be asymptomatic and the back pain is just due to a mechanical reason but they get an mri done see the report uh, see uh, the report as spondylosis or see the report as a disc bulge and they get panic panicky uh, unnecessarily which we i think we can avoid right dr bagiraj would you like to add something as a wrap up yes. uh, bed rest that's what is, most of the patient thinks when there is a back pain you take risk mm -hmm. you can take rest for one or two days to take rest continuously then then it becomes muscle becomes weak if the pain becomes chronic long standing so walking is the best exercise so whenever you have back pain start walking once the pain decreases then you can do exercise again go do exercises when you have severe pain just walking is the only exercise and avoid sitting continuously for long duration whoever is working for 6 to 8 hours or 10 hours continuously just every 30 minutes you should just get up for a minute and stretch and sit then sit down this are the two ways so even when you are talking about natural healing you are asking a patient to give at least two weeks so isn't uh, isn't that time span uh, uh, like long enough to worsen it in any way no every every day by day or every week the pain should decrease mm -hmm. if the pain is increasing or if it is not decreasing sometimes you need not wait for more than 3 weeks 4 weeks or so if it is keep on increasing that means it's not healing something else is happening mm -hmm. it may be infection it may be something else the disc prolapse or some muscle strain it should the pain should decrease as the day goes first day should be maximum second day should be lesser than that every week it should be less than the previous week or previous day okay uh, dr sriharsha would you like to say anything in your wind up comments uh, to conclude the topic uh, then uh, so lower back muscles are the muscles which make us uh, stand straight and upper back muscles are uh, the muscles which make us uh, keep our chins up so to maintain that uh, we have to do proper exercise regularly to prevent back ache if there is a back ache then we must know when to approach the doctor uh, how we lift uh, any weight we have hand muscle pain we have a back muscle pain when we lift something uh, we should know when to approach a doctor like uh, we have a single leg pain or a severe uh, pain that we can't bend then we have to approach the doctor i think uh, that will be enough right thank you we'll end on that positive note so i would like to thank all our panelists and all those who joined today's webinar on slip disc and endoscopic surgery brought to you by narubi hospitals under the hindu wellness series thank you doctors for sparing your time thank you thank you thank you, thank you.